Well, after two videos of forgetting, I finally remembered to do a shoutout. Today's shoutout goes to a very unnoticed but super skilled player named Brutal Sword. He's been a great player for a long time now, though he's virtually unrecognized, having only 150 subscribers at the time of making this. If you do somehow know him, it's likely because he recently beat Cold Sweat. On top of Cold Sweat, he has progressed on Kinos, Sonic Wave, and other levels, and he's beaten extremes such as Sigma, Omega, Sunset Sandstorm, Black Blizzard, and quite a few more. All at only 150 subscribers. It's needless to say you should definitely go give him some much deserved love, and his channel has been conveniently linked at the top of the description so you can go check him out. With that all out of the way, let's get on to the video. Hey guys. So, a few weeks ago I was going back and watching some old Geometry Dash videos for a little bit of nostalgia, and I came across a video that C1997 made about two and a half years ago. Some of you might remember it if you've been in and around the community that long, as it was quite popular, and it was titled Every Drama in 2.1. The contents of the video are pretty self-explanatory, but if you haven't caught on, he essentially recapped every drama from the beginning of 2.1, which was January 17th, 2017, to the day the video was released, which was July 15th, 2018. If you don't feel like doing the math, that's about 18 months, or a year and four months. C's video picked up off the Etzer drama, if you're wondering. The date I'm releasing this video is the 22nd of November, 2020, meaning since C's video, it has been around two years and four months. When this realization came to me, I suddenly got the idea to make a video that covered all the drama that spanned that period of time that was unaccounted for in his video. There have been quite a large number of dramas that have taken place since then, so this video should be pretty interesting to go through. It took me a very long time to get a full list and understand all the dramas that took place, but I'm fairly certain that my list is as accurate as it can be. Alongside listing all the dramas, I will also be detailing their legacy and their impact today for some, as there are many that have significantly altered the community landscape as we understand it presently. I do want to quickly make a disclaimer or two. First off, not every drama will be concluded here, as there have been plenty of small, petty Twitter dramas or other types of situations that are insignificant that aren't worth mentioning here. I used my own judgement to decide what made the cut and what didn't, so if you're anticipating a drama that wasn't included here, take a second to think if it was really that big before you comment about it. Second, my definition of drama is different from what you're probably expecting. Drama usually is defined as quarreling between two or more parties in the community, and while I definitely included these instances, I also included any big events that rock the community landscape. In simpler terms, there may be an event or two listed here that did not necessarily have any actual fighting in it, but was a dramatic enough event to spread around the community and cause unrest or discussion. I just thought I would clarify that before starting the video, and beyond this, I really have nothing else to say. I do want to say that I won't be going super in-depth for all the dramas here, as we have some 35 to cover, so you can probably understand how I don't want to drag them out. This means that, despite likely ending up very long in total watch time, this video will have somewhat of a faster pace than my usual ones, so be prepared for that. Also, if you think I seriously missed something big, feel free to comment about it, but otherwise, I don't have anything else to say here. So without further ado, let's take a dive into the past and resurface some of those good old 2.1 dramas. Picking up right where C's video left off, the first drama we have to discuss today is community legend Riot's YouTube channel getting terminated. On July 3rd, 2018, only five days after C's drama video, Riot, a very popular Geometry Dash YouTuber and community presence, had his channel deleted off YouTube. For the past month or so, Riot had been slowly growing away from the Geometry Dash community and starting to transition to Fortnite-based content, a game that had blown up in popularity that summer. Throughout GD history, we have seen countless personalities try to move their content to other games, and 90% of the time, these efforts pale in comparison to their Geometry Dash views. However, Riot was an exception. His Fortnite videos exploded in attention, farther than his Geometry Dash videos could have ever taken him, with multiple videos exceeding the 1 billion view tally. But out of the blue on the 23rd, this would all be cut short, when Riot's channel was mysteriously removed from YouTube. Somewhere deep in the YouTube terms of service, there is a rule that you cannot advertise external platforms in your videos, and with Riot advertising his Twitch streams, his channel was banned. This was meant to only be a 3 month ban, but his channel would not be reinstated anytime soon, staying dormant for years after the situation went under Ray. This understandably sent shockwaves throughout the community, and it would start movements such as the original hashtag Free Riot. Riot is definitely one of the most key players of all time in Geometry Dash, and to see such an influential channel deleted just like that was a huge slap in the face to the community. Like I said, Riot would not get his channel back for a very long time, 
long enough for the community to forget about it entirely. That's essentially where the drama ends, so let's move on to the next one. The next drama is quite a memorable one. Beginning mid-September of 2018, numerous top players would engage to expose Tasha Lux, a popular YouTuber, for hacking the extreme demon Devil Vortex by Rustam. There had been attempts to expose Tosh for hacking this level previously when he first verified it, but he had managed to brush them off up until this point. However, now there was some new incriminating evidence that rekindled the drama. And much more unknown at the time, the Pesto would discover a key piece of evidence, which was a group of 54 oddly arranged saws at the top of Tosh's copy of Devil Vortex. In Nepesta's mind, these were used to balance out the object count of the level because it was semi-autoed when verified. By this, he means that when Tosh beat the level, he used blue pads to make parts such as the wave and ball sections auto, and he obviously had to remove these when he released them to the servers, which led to him placing these 54 saws at the top not to change the amount of objects. Tosh Relux responded to this by refuting his points, and the drama got even bigger from here. Nepesta realized Tosh had just dodged the main point Nepesta had been trying to get at him with, which was the saws, as he instead just talked about his bias and other things in Nepesta's video. This prompted him to make a follow-up video which would again lead to more dodging of the main questions from Tosh, as Tosh's response would simply be an upload of him doing some runs as the level as proof he had not hacked it. And eventually the exposing of Tosh turned into an even bigger project. Nepesta enlisted players like Gabs, himself, Technical, Diamond Splash, Sonic 80, Golden, God's Gamer Zero, Tritron, Warm Fodder, Trix33, Media, Spam Drew, and a few others to help team up and expose him. They released a video publishing their findings on September 18th. In this, they managed to fully map out the areas that Tosh likely auto the level, contrary to how Nepesta had just simply stated that he wasn't sure which part he autoed in his first video. They also mentioned the fact that he did not show himself uploading the level to the servers in his recording, again hinting that he went back, removed the auto pads, and added saws at the top before he uploaded it. They also discovered that in Tosh's copy of Paracosm Circles, there were 45 randomly placed objects at the top of the level, again hinting that Tosh had autoed that as well. This is very incriminating evidence, as the fact that this weird occurrence was in two of his levels that were very autoable inevitably leads us to the question whether Tosh is truly legit or not. Not to mention the fact that Tosh never provided a distinct and reasonable explanation for the objects. On top of this, they mentioned the inconsistencies in his skill and attempts on Extreme Demons, and this all prompted Tosh to release a final response on October 25th, 2018. Tosh used the excuse of him using the saws above the level to grab them for buffs later on, and he also said the blocks above Paracosm Circles were there because he accidentally hit swipe and placed them. There were plenty of saws closer to the level Tosh could have used to buff Devil Vortex if he needed, or he could have used a custom object, and the fact that they were so far on the top of the level makes it unlikely he was actually using them for that purpose. The Paracosm Circle's defense was also quite weak, and with this, the list team decided to ban Tosh from the demons list and not make another response, that there was really no point, and any further videos on it would just result in the same back and forth with more fabricated rebuttals from Tosh. The community would be left to make their own choice on whether they believed him from here, and there would be no moves from the big parties involved on each side of the argument onward from Tosh's video. With that said, the drama died out, but it's still definitely one worth remembering and including in this video. Our next drama takes place a few months after the Tosh Devil Vortex situation, in February of 2019, and though it's on a much smaller scale than what that had spiraled into, it's still something worth mentioning. Renovate is the sequel to Allegiance by Nicrodox and the third level in the Dedication series, as many know, and today it's been verified as a top 10 demon. However, back in 2019, it undoubtedly would have been a top 3 demon at the least, and it should have been, as top player Quiver actually verified it. He did so on February 2nd, but there's one key element to his victory over Renovin that is essential to the drama. He didn't record it. This, of course, meant the level could not be considered legitimately verified, as of the level that hard, it was not acceptable to just say it was beaten off recording and have it be put on the list. This is a very unfortunate circumstance for a quiver, and it obviously led to a lot of questions to the community as to if they should accept it as a legit verification or not, but the eventual conclusion was that a quiver's verification could not be considered legit. This wasn't a very extensive drama, but I still thought it would be significant enough to mention, and it definitely was a super unique circumstance that the community hadn't really faced before. Overall, not a super impactful situation, but still one worth talking about. Next up is a pretty glossed over drama that is one worth mentioning, despite most people likely having forgot about it by now. This drama is again a few months after the last, being in early to mid-June of 2019, 
and overall, late 2018 and early 2019 were very uneventful days for the community. Despite this, there were sparks of drama like the one we are talking about right now, which is the overuse of top players and community figures' faces in Geometry Dash social media. Technical49 is the player we are going to be focused on, on here, as alongside his rise to the top that occurred in that era of Geometry Dash, we saw many people start to meme his face alongside other top players' faces a lot. Technicals was the most overused in this at the time, but others were used as well, and it got to the point where the community made Discord servers and gimmick Twitter accounts to joke around about their faces. This led to Technical making a community post about the situation in mid-June, and the drama somewhat cooled down from here, even though people still meme his face and other top players' faces to this day. Not a super prevalent drama, but even though most people have probably forgot about it, it was a pretty sizable event when it occurred. The next drama is one that a lot of people likely remember if they've been around in the community for most of 2.1. This is the infamous Zodiac hacking scandal. Zodiac was an extreme demon mega collab that had been in the works for years prior to its release, and it was aiming to be the hardest demon ever verified. Originally hosted by Rico LP and eventually passed to Bionox, the level went through many forms and verifiers, but eventually, the final level would end up in the hands of top player Xander556. And on January 29th, 2019, Xander verified Zodiac. This video had no clicks, but it seemed a legitimate enough recording, and the level was rated and placed at number one on the list. It would be a feared demon, and only Technical 49 would beat it in the coming months, but in mid-June of 2019, Xander dropped a bombshell on the community. This is that he speed hacked the level, and it was updated to an undecorated layout and was unrated and removed from the list. Interestingly enough, this led to Crimson Planet becoming the top one for a brief period of time. Hack top ones are always a huge shock throughout the community, and Zodiac was no exception. Questions arose as to what the next logical steps were, and eventually the level was re-rated and the title of Verifier went to Technical, the first victor. The hacking of Zodiac was another huge entry on the list of hack top ones, and it was also a big factor for the push towards mandatory inclusion of clicks and list completions and verifications. Today, there are barely any hard feelings towards Xander, as he has become a legitimate top player that has begun anew but the hacking of Zodiac is definitely a significant drama that had a large impact on the community and stayed of the top 50 demons list. Next up is a drama that spanned the course of three months, and though it wasn't always present at the front lines of community conflict, it was somewhat always present in the minds of some, having been initiated in July of 2019 and resolved in September of that same year. The drama I am talking about is the God Eater situation in which Novel Boy's famous extreme demon God Eater suddenly disappeared from the servers alongside any recordings of it by Nob himself in July. Many jumped to the conclusion that he had been hacked, but in a series of two community posts, he assured his followers that he had not been hacked and more information on the reasoning behind this decision would be coming soon. Fast forward about a month and a half, and Novel Boy uploads a video explaining the situation on September 5th, 2019. Apparently, in mid-July, Novel Boy received an email from the creators of the game God Eater at Nintendo, that said Nob had broken copyright law with his extreme demon. With the name of the level and the art at the end of the level both belonging to the franchise, his use of them was unintentionally breaking the law. This is what prompted his sudden removal of all his God Eater videos alongside the level itself. Novel Boy announced that he would be remaking God Eater under a new name and different art, and this is what turned God Eater into the level Astral Divinity we know it as today. This was a big first to the community, and it set the precedent for all other creators to realize this could theoretically happen to their levels too. Keeping that in mind, it's pretty easy to see how this was a very influential drama that made a big mark on the community mindset toward creating. With God Eater not actually being permanently removed and taking on a new form, there were really no hard feelings at the end of the day, but it was still an impactful situation that affected the community heavily. The next situation involves Rob Top in a rather unknown level, Murder Metal by Xylanox. Murder Metal was an extreme demon released May 24th of 2019, and it's one of Xylanox's least known levels. It follows a factory style very similar to Annihilation Nation and Necroside, and I'd consider it a mix of the two. Anyway, as you can expect from the name and the theme, Murder Metal is what some would call an edgy level. The name is the most key element to this drama, as in July of 2019, Robtop ran a script that deleted hundreds of levels with inappropriate titles off the servers, including Murder Metal. Xylanox had no backup of the demon, and this essentially led to its deletion. As you can probably expect, this is a pretty big hit to Xylanox, and though it wasn't a huge drama, it was very unfortunate news that spread quickly throughout the community. This likely would have been a much bigger deal if Murder Metal was a more famous level, so I think it's probably best that it was more unknown. 
Then again, if it was more famous, more people would have had available copies of it to re-upload. Anyway, again, not a huge drama, but one I thought I would mention briefly. Another drama involving Rob Top is up next. This is another short one, but it would have a pretty significant effect on the game as a whole. Prior to July 2019, unlisted levels could be found by simply searching the ID, and there was no prerequisite we have today in the form of you being forced to be GD friends at the level owner. This would change in a group of people I won't mention linked a large number of levels in the server using this unlisted exploit, most notably BooTT3. Robtop obviously heard of this, as he changed the system to demand in-game friendship between two players if they want to see unlisted levels from each other. This system is still in place today, and though it's a rather unknown and short drama, it's still one that had a pretty sizable impact on the game. The next drama is one that some of you might remember. This involved the quickly rising top player Technical49 and the extreme demon Koretta by Shuri. Koretta was a top 10 extreme demon that had recently been raided, and with Technical not being a fan of the level and thinking it unrateworthy, he expressed that he thought it should never have been raided to the community via Twitter in September of 2019. This led to his fanbase taking it farther than they ever should have, sending a ridiculous amount of hate towards Shuri in the level and bombing the comment section of it. This went as far as death threats being sent to Shuri, and Technical ended up being very upset with his fanbase because of this. Tech never in any way, shape, or form expressed that he wanted the level or creator to be attacked like that, but his fanbase took it farther than they should have. This drama peaked when the level actually got unrated, a drastic consequence that not even Technical anticipated, but the blame was placed on his shoulders, with him being the easiest scapegoat. The level would be re-rated in a short time, but over the next few days, Technical would get a large amount of hate from Koal Retta fans for his supposed sicking of his fanbase onto the level in Cherry. Technical never actually expressed a desire to get the level unrated or a desire to send mass hate in his direction, and he made a community post addressing this issue three days after it was re-rated. The situation would eventually die down, but it was just another clashing of two large parties in the community that would have real consequences to players like Sherry and their level. Next up is a drama involving the well-known top demon Kinos and a few top players previously or presently involved in the level who got in a quarrel over it. Some of you might already know this, but Kambi and Krazen were both verifiers of Kinos at one point in time before it was passed to Depesta. Of course, both these players eventually dropped the demon, but that didn't mean they forgot about it. In mid-September of 2019, while Nepesta was still verifying the level, Combi asked Bionox if he could beat his copy of Kinos for himself and not upload a video of it. Bionox saw no issue with this as long as he didn't upload a recording of it, as Nepesta was still the active verifier. And a short while later, Combi beat the level. However, on September 13th, he broke his promise to Bionox and uploaded a video of the completion, which resulted in Nepesta getting mad. And it also prompted Krazen to start playing his own version of the level for fun as well as uploading videos of it. Nepesta was an unknown player, so this led to some confusion as to who the real verifier was, and it also angered both Nepesta and Bionox. This led to clashing between the two parties on many Geometry Dash social media platforms. The situation was eventually resolved as time healed the wounds inflicted, and Nepesta continued to play his version of Kinos that he would verify a few months later. This drama was not outstandingly public compared to the previous ones, but it is still worth discussing. The drama we have to talk about next is one that mostly involves the whole community. As many of you should know, Prelude and the Geometry Dash 2.1 awards were released in December of 2019, almost a year ago now. Following the announcement of the nominations and the choices that were made, many parties in the community came forth with criticism as to who was nominated and the flaws in the system, myself included. I made a video on this in December, and though I have unlisted it now due to how poorly made and ineffective at actually arguing my points it was, I still stand by all the things I said. Many people within the community expressed concern about the choices for numerous categories of the nominations, as many key creators and talented players were skipped out entirely on, raising questions as if the committee behind the awards were just biased or plain uninformed. Both these realities were quite scary, and this leads to unrest for many. As far as I know, the video I made was the only real direct public address of this, but it was definitely something many members of the community were talking about if you go back and look at comments in the awards video, or Twitter threads about it. This is just another event that led to distrust towards the hierarchy of community leaders that organized the awards. And despite it eventually fading out from memory, it's definitely a spectacle worth mentioning in this video. Our next situation is the first that was initiated in 2020, a year that would be much more fruitful when it comes to community quarrels compared to 2019. This is one that I'm sure a lot of people remember, and it involves Dolphy, Tartarus, and many other top players. Dolphy had been playing Tartarus to verify it prior to the turn of the year, and on January 6th, 2020, 
he managed to be the first to beat the long-awaited Extreme Demon. It was rated quickly and placed at number one with no questions asked, difficulty-wise. The questions would come in the form of Dolphy's legitimacy. As you should remember from earlier in the video, the Demon's List's last top one had also been hacked, being Zodiac, so it was reasonable to have concern over the new top one also being possibly illegitimate. Dolphy was a very mysterious player in general, and not too much was known about him. This led to, despite Dolphy's recording looking very legitimate, questions being asked about what the truth was. Large parties such as End and Riot would be the ones to speak up about this, and the Demon's List would start to conduct an official test of his legitimacy via private livestreams, while End and his team began to dig evidence on the suspicious player. The community was swayed heavily to the side of Dolphy being illegitimate at this point, myself included, and this really shows how there's a lot of blind following when it comes to hacking scandals like this. The Demon's List was not public about their findings, but End eventually streamed a collection of evidence he and his team had gathered. This included suspicion over Dolphy's clicks and if they were sped up, as End supposedly bought the mouse Dolphy used and came to the conclusion that the noise it makes when it's speed hacked is identical to the clicks Dolphy's recording had. In hindsight, mice make very different noises when clicked on different surfaces, and Dolphy also uses two fingers for his playing, which likely also contributed to this. Dolphy did respond to all these accusations a day later with a video that showed him getting 92% with hand cam, but the drama would not cease there. Another month would pass from here as dirt was continuously dug on Dolphy by outside parties, and the demons list continued to conduct their investigation. A big piece of evidence that would sell a lot of people, myself included, would be found by Zanny, Walwat, and Colorbolt, and be published for all to see in mid-February. This was a clip of Dolphy playing live on stream, and when he gets an error of Audacity crashing, his game continues to run with the pop-up still being displayed. Zanny tests this and finds that if Dolphy continued to click, it would have closed the pop-up, leading them to the conclusion that the stream was pre-recorded. This, again, sold many people, but the Demon's List would eventually come to the conclusion that there was no definitive evidence that proved Dolphy is a hacker. They did numerous streams and tests for him that all pointed to him being a legitimate player, and that's where we are today. There would never really be an official statement that cleared Dolphy from the List team, but it's regarded today that he's legitimate. The community would forget about the accusations in time, and while he remains a very mysterious player, Dolphy has essentially been cleared from the drama that transpired two months shy of a year ago. This is a very eventful situation that led to many arguments throughout the community, and it started out 2020 with a bang. Overall, the Dolphy hacking accusation drama, while mostly in the past today, is definitely one for the history books. The next drama we have to talk about takes place in early January of 2020. This situation involves Tosh Lux in the official Geometry Dash Discord server, and a feud between him and Paws as well as other staff. The GD Discord server already had quite the reputation in the community for being unfair at times, and somewhat poorly moderated, and while it has improved, when this drama began to circulate there was already high tensions in the server for its biased organization. The Tosh Deluxe drama would be the catalyst for change within it. On January 7th, 2020, Tosh Deluxe uploaded a video to his channel that addressed the server and many of its flaws directly. This would be in collaboration with Mithra, today known as Alfiria, himself, Red Husey, and Chara. In the video, Tosh addresses the fact that he got banned three times from the server despite not once breaking a rule and that their response to this is that they are allowed to ban people who are well-known rule breakers outside of the server. This makes sense for users like well-known raiders, but Tosh was not a raider, and he believed he should have been considered innocent until proven guilty. They also address how many of the rules on the server are very vague and only seem to apply to certain situations where it's convenient for the staff, and how the rules are also lacking because of poor wording and enforcement. They also express how whenever there's a staff member being unreasonable, any attempt to talk to head staff and DMs about it leads to being made fun of or just being given non-answers. Ironically, they also show how there is a big push on the server for everything being resolved in DMs with staff, but the interactions in these DMs never actually get anywhere. This did not apply to all staff, of course. They also go into detail about some situations involving pause and other mods that show a hefty amount of bias among them, but I won't go into that. All in all, the video Tosh and Alfiria May managed to capture unrest that many community members had felt toward the server and put it into a 15-minute exposal, if you will, which led to it getting spread around the community quite quickly. Many people stood behind what was said in the video despite Tosh not being the most respected person in the community, and while the video wasn't necessarily handled in the most respectful manner, it was still well explained. This has led to a lot of changes on the server today, and though things got intense in some other scenarios on Twitter, the drama eventually died down and both parties moved away from each other. This drama wasn't the biggest we've seen here in 2.1, but it's definitely a pretty big one that's for sure worth mentioning here. 
The next situation we are going to talk about today involves the infamous creator, a rising player, and one very hard level. Aiden is a superstar player that many know today, and ever since June of 2019, he had been playing and verifying the Extreme Demon Azure Flare by End. Aiden never had explicit permission to verify the level, but in the early stages of him playing it, End never objected. Aiden was not the official verifier at this point, and that title would come later when he and End decided he would be after End witnessed his inspiring progress. End was not very proud of the level, and in fact, he resented that it would ever be released. Despite this, he let Aiden play it due to how dedicated he was to the level. Aiden was aiming to get the level as top 1, and he continued to play it over the summer of 2019 and into early 2020. End would be very inconsistent in his messages towards Aiden verifying the level, sometimes supporting him and other times attending to get him to drop it, but every time he would be guilted into letting him continue due to the sheer difficulty and dedication Aiden put in. This would change in February of 2020. Despite endorsing his progress only a short time prior to this, End decided that he wanted Aiden to stop playing the Extreme Demon entirely. This led to a pretty uncomfortable drama where End, the level creator, wanted the level dead, despite Aiden still being the active verifier that had put in a ridiculous amount of time into the level. I made a video on this in mid-February, and eventually the consensus in the community turned out to be that though it wasn't a very nice thing to do, and had the right to kill the level as a creator even though Aiden had spent so much time on it. Aiden would eventually start to work on his organizing his own remake of the level, something End could not stop, and that is still in the works today. The drama would fizzle out from here, but it was a pretty intense situation back when it was alive, as many people backed Aiden because of Azure Flare being such a difficult level and the community wanting to see a new top 1. Those circumstances led to very passionate exchanges about the topic, and not all were respectful. All in all, the Azure Flare situation is definitely one to remember, and it's for sure worthy of an inclusion in this video. For our next drama, we have a pretty intense situation that involved both an infamous player and an infamous hacker. The hacker we are talking about is Breeze. Breeze had been hacking completion videos of famous levels for months before the situation arose, and he made his videos look very, very real and legitimate until you saw written at the very bottom of the description that they were hacked for effect. This got him an insane amount of views, but it wasn't really hurting anyone. That was, until this drama got underway. Bo had been growing as a player for a long time now, with his Extreme Demon the Golden getting large amounts of attention, and with him getting notoriety around the community for being a top tier challenge list player. With the Golden becoming a very well known level in the community, Breeze decided to make a video on it with a leaked copy of the level. Breeze released the video on March 22nd, 2020, and this is where our drama begins. Bo was angry at Breeze for making a video on his level, as he faked that he verified it in the title for clickbaity views. This was understandably quite misleading to the more uneducated side of the community, and Bo striked his The Golden video for stolen content and attempted to get his channel taken down. This was an overreaction from Bo, and this is what would really initiate the situation. Some of Bo's friends that I will not name from here went on to dox Breeze, finding his full name, address, phone number, and parents' name, but they only leaked the address. This was still a heavy overreaction from Breeze's video. Bo would get in numerous fights with Breeze from here, with Breeze responding in an exposing video that would take shots at him and tell him that he didn't care that Bo wanted to take the video down. Bo would get very, very stressed out from this whole situation, and he eventually had a mental breakdown due to it. Bo would also make a series of community posts that explained the drama to the community, and he told the public here about his mental health issues and what the Breeze situation had been doing to him. These have since been deleted, but they, in essence, cleared up rumors that had been spreading around about the clashing of these two community figures. Eventually stuff would die down, and Bo and Breeze are actually friends today, but this would be a very heavy drama at the time. It would not only be a big factor that chipped away at Bo's mental state and willingness to be in the community, but it would also give Breeze further room to make his name as a well-known entity within the active fanbase. This would definitely not be as public of a drama as the previous few, but it's still definitely a significant one worth talking about. The next little situation we have to talk about is not as significant or as intense as the past couple have been, but it was still a notable community-wide interaction that is necessary to talk about here. The Hero Molten situation was mostly a Twitter-based drama that occurred in April of 2020, that involved members of the mod team, a creator named Hero Molten, and community members all throughout Twitter. Hero Molten has been a creator that has built numerous works throughout 2.1, and many of them have been featured. So yeah, there's a creator named Hero Molten making levels which have been receiving relative success. What's the problem here? Well, many people in the community took quite a dislike to Hero Molten's levels, calling them effortless, lazy, and or ugly, alongside condemning the mod team for setting the levels and Robtop for rating them. Throughout April, 
People post about his levels and address the mod team in Rob Top for their seemingly nonsensical bias towards this creator, and this leads to sparks flying all over Twitter. Some defend Hero Molten, saying that while his levels aren't the best, they're very well themed and show a lot of room for improvement. Others trash his works and say he's one of the worst creators in the game. This establishes two sides to the drama, the side allying with the mod team, who argues his levels should be sent because of the potential they show, and the Hero Molten haters, the ones who believes his work are highly generic and effortless and have no place in the featured section. There is a middle ground that believes his works are not great and shouldn't be sent, but do show room for improvement, but not many take on this role in the heat of the drama. As the situation eventually starts to die down, the overall community consensus seems to reach the realization that while Hero Molten's levels aren't the best, and them getting consistently featured is questionable, he shouldn't be hated for his work, and he should be respected for putting in the effort to improve. This ideology eventually makes its way around Twitter, and while there are still extremists who stand firm on one side of the argument, most today reside in the middle when looking back upon the situation. The Hero Molten situation was just another example of a heated Twitter debate, but one with a positive ending. Overall, today most have come to a satisfactory conclusion, supporting Hero Molten to improve and capitalize on the promise his early work showed. The next little drama is one that I was actually somewhat involved in. To understand the context of this situation, we have to go back to April 9th, 2019, over a year before this drama went underway. April 9th is the date that top player Atomic verified the legendary Once Impossible 2.0 Demon Thinking Space, which is the main focus of the drama. On March 26th, 2020, almost a year on from Atomic verified the level, top player and challengeless grinder NCAT became the first victor. NCAT's victory over this level and the fact that he jumped from bloodbath to thinking space pushed the demon into the spotlight once again, which prompted Robtop to recognize that the level had been officially verified. There was already a sizable party pushing for the level to get raided before this, and it was only strengthened by NCAT's victory. Fortunately for them, the level got raided a few days later. Following this event, numerous individuals in the community would speak out against it being awarded stars, including Jakob Nugget and myself. I make a video on the topic in early April of 2020 that prompts and spearheads the discussion in the community about the topic. Of course, I'm quite biased about this topic of discussion, so I won't be addressing the intricacies of both sides of the argument. If you want to watch the video I made, it's still public on my channel, and though I definitely think I could have argued my thoughts better, I still stand by all my assertions in the video. Many people misjudged what I was saying, though, which is why I think I could have done a better job conveying my points. This situation also takes form in places like Twitter and YouTube comment sections, and while there's a brief spark in the discussion surrounding it, most engagement regarding the extreme demon star raid eventually fizzles out. This is a somewhat forgettable drama for most, I assume, but being one of the key players, I thought of it as a significant one to mention. Anyway, let's get on to our next one. Our next drama's origins stem from mid-April 2020, the 13th to be more specific. This is another Twitter-based situation, and our story starts in the profile of Sirius 7 Amped, in a post they make on the 13th, they assert that Alias, a popular Geometry Dash YouTuber, has been stealing trendy content ideas from other big GD YouTubers. This gets a hefty amount of positive reception from the majority of the community, but Alias himself responds, defending himself in the manner that he asks permission from the content creator on his playing one attempt on every Extreme Demon video, and that his video of main levels in double speed doesn't even closely resemble the Pestis video. This results in a fight between the accuser and Alias on Twitter, and this eventually dies down but it is reignited from a tweet by Floroni. Floroni is another popular GD YouTuber, and he expresses that he posted an idea for a video he had on Twitter and Alias suddenly made a video exactly like his, indicating that he stole it. Others on Twitter also pitch in, showing other ideas that Alias had seemingly stole over the time he has been on YouTube. Alias eventually makes a post admitting that he took inspiration from other videos to get the ideas for his, but he asserts that there's nothing wrong with using trendy topics to gain more traction. People in the community somewhat align themselves from here with either Alias' side, arguing that he can do whatever he wants on YouTube as long as he gives credit to the original idea creator, or those who think a genuine YouTuber should come up with his own ideas 90% of the time. Eventually, the two parties come to a mutual understanding in a final Twitter thread, and the drama ends there. This is definitely one of the more petty and insignificant dramas on this list, but I still thought it would be worthy of a mention as it has to do with a sizable YouTuber and a pretty detrimental accusation from the community that got into some heated fighting. This drama ended almost as quickly as it started, though, and it's a mostly forgotten and unknown one after all these months have passed. Next is one of the biggest hacking scandals in recent times. VSC was a level supposedly verified by Bo in some hundreds of thousands of attempts, 
and it was the top one decorated challenge that was leagues ahead of anything else on the top 50 challenge list. Bowie had been a mostly unknown challenge disc grinder up until this point, but his verification of VSC would change all of that. VSC was a vital level not only to Bo's success, but to the success of the challenge list and the attention it's gotten in recent times. Bo claimed to have verified this level in May of 2020, and the video and his popularity blew up. However, it would all soon come crashing down. On May 11, 2020, Bo would make an infamous community post where he would admit to using no spike hacks in his VSC verification after getting a nearly perfect run. This hack makes it so spikes don't kill you, and Bo essentially got a run that was so perfect he could pass it off as a legit verification. This combined with the fact that the level was ridiculously dark and hard to see. To further throw any possible suspects off his trail, Bo downscaled the video quality before uploading it to YouTube as to make it harder to tell that he should have died in some places. He mostly beat the level, and though he claimed to die around 80%, he actually would have died at around 40. Top players have found this by overlaying his video with the bright layout of the level, which shows which places Bo would have been killed. His reaction was later edited in. Bo left the community for good after this, deleting all his videos, and he left his fanbase and any spectators with their mouths hung open. No one had even suspected Bo of hacking at the time, and all of a sudden, the immortalized victory over this seemingly semi-impossible challenge turned out to be a well-made fabrication of truth. This took the level down from the number one spot and put Toxic Blades back at the crown. The level still remains unbeaten today, but despite that, it's ever-present in the community eye, and it's feasible that one day someone will clear it, with players like Benedict, Aiden, and UFWM having decent progress. This is just another example of a hack top one, and it adds to the historical tally of extreme demons and challenges that have been illegitimately completed for that number one spot. The community has mostly moved on from Boa today, with new challenges grinders like UFWM and NCAT taking his place, but no one will forget the incredible and shocking scandal that was the hacking of VSC. The next situation is hardly a drama per se, but it's still something very worth mentioning that was vital to the progression of skill in Geometry Dash. Our focus here is on a player known as Powered by Pi, who is not only a very skilled player, but a very well-educated individual in code and Geometry Dash mechanics. In early May of 2020, Pi would make a discovery that would change the game forever. He found a way, without using outside hacks, to make Geometry Dash play on higher refresh rates than their monitor would usually allow. The FPS bypass already achieves this, but that is a third-party program, and at the time the demons was considered a hack and did not count records that used the bypass. Pi discovered that if you use a VGA to HDMI adapter, you can essentially trick your computer into thinking you have another monitor plugged in. In the now dubbed Pi Pass method, you could use this to overclock your non-existent monitor to very high refresh rates. This means you can play Geometry Dash on your primary monitor or laptop screen at virtually any refresh rate, and by making a custom resolution with the Pi Pass, launching Geometry Dash and applying the resolution, you can utilize this built-in FPS bypass without actually using the hack. However, Despite the nature of this new form of FPS bypassing not being a third-party system, the list team still had a couple concerns involving it. These are that it could be considered an exploit and it would be difficult to enforce an FPS limit and make the game not buggy. On May 13th, Gizbro makes a video addressing these points and gains a hefty amount of traction in the community, and this is a big factor that plays into the list team's eventual decision. Prior to this drama, it was not allowed in any way, shape, or form to change your FPS artificially without having a native monitor, leading to a huge gap between the privileged players who could afford the hardware and those who couldn't. The Pi Pass would change all of this, and it would lead to huge boosts in top player skill as less hardware privileged players joined the ranks of Pointer Crate Stats viewers. And on May 25th, 2020, the Demons List would come out with an official statement not only allowing them to use the Pi Pass for their completions, but also the FPS Bypass. I don't think I have to stress how huge this was for GD, and it definitely was a massive day in the history of the game. Since then, we've seen so many bypass players rise to the top in the stats viewer and become legitimate top players, and it all stemmed from a brilliant discovery made by an unknown top player. Anyway, I won't drag this one out any longer, and let's get on to our next drama. Our next situation takes place again on Twitter in June of 2020. This one involves two very big community influences, Wimtastic and River Cyber, and an intense exchange they had over our favorite Geometry Dash drama platform. River Cyber was a very big content creator in early 2.1 up to mid 2.1, and his close to 40,000 subscribers demonstrate this. Some of his videos from 4 years ago have over a million views today, which definitely shows how big of an audience he had with his hits. Anyway, alongside being a big YouTuber, he was also a big community presence, and on his Discord server, he had allegedly been very racist, homophobic, and a toxic presence all around. 
This was likely common knowledge for those who were in his server at the time it was active, especially to those like Wimtastic, another sizable GD YouTuber that was friends with River. The communities often mingled, and this led to them getting to know each other very well. Not much is known to me about what exactly transpired to result in their splitting, but it's evident that as years passed, Wimtastic grew resentful of River and his ideologies. Some years after their relevance passed, River Cyber would try to call out Wimp for being attention hungry, and this angered him and prompted him to make his next move. On June 15th of 2020, Wimtastic made a post taking a shot at River and calling him out for his racist tendencies, and this is what would initiate the real drama. Wimptastic would continue to condemn River Cyber's behavior, and when people asked why he was unearthing this information, he said it was because it was unacceptable and needed to be spread around the community. River Cyber responded by saying that Wimptastic also made racist comments, and this was refuted by Wimptastic having changed since then, and River still supporting those same behaviors. River eventually made a very offensive and racist tweet about George Floyd that Wimptastic called out, and River actually eventually tried to pass it off that Wimptastic hacked his account and posted racist things in another tweet. This would quickly and easily be debunked, and soon after this, River's Twitter account would be terminated, resulting in the end of the drama. This is just another petty Twitter situation, but it's since it's the clashing of two legendary influential figures in Geometry Dash history and the sour downfall of a once adored content creator, I thought it would be worthy to talk about. Anyway, let's move on to our next drama. Okay, so I just wanted to put this quick disclaimer here. I completely messed up the timeline of where the next drama was supposed to go. This is the male Veronica situation, and I accidentally put it in June of 2020 when it's actually supposed to be in June of 2019, but it would be really painful to go back and insert it into its correct location, so I'm just gonna have to leave it here. Just know that this did not happen in 2020, and it actually happened a year prior in 2019. If you want reference to know what it happened, this puts it around the Zodiac hacking scandal. Thank you for understanding, and sorry for the inconvenience. The next drama has to do with some pretty serious topics, and if for whatever reason you do not want to hear about them, then I recommend skipping over this part of the video. Anyway, the next situation we have to discuss is the male Veronica drama, which, in June and July of 2019, numerous people throughout the community would come forth mainly on Twitter to coagulate information about numerous legally and morally questionable acts he committed over the past years of him being in the community. People like Suri come forward to the community with stories of males showing nudes of themselves to a 12-year-old child, which is illegal, alongside asking another minor, this time an 11-year-old, for nude pictures. This is obviously sickening and not only morally skewed, but also legally skewed. Many, many more Discord DMs were leaked of him saying highly inappropriate things to these minors, and I'm not going to show them here due to their explicit nature, but just know that it's some pretty nasty stuff. He also catfished many individuals, sending nudes that were not his in exchange for nudes from the other person, which is incredibly disrespectful and morally wrong. Male also cheated numerous times in many online relationships he was a part of, demonstrating further his lack of any sort of care for individuals, only acting based on his own desires. He has also attacked numerous people and seriously hurt them on a deep level, and he hasn't cared a bit. This information was all publicized by numerous sources over the months of June and July. Railblazer would collaborate with a team of many other influential community members in July of 2019 to make a video detailing all the evidence of Male being a psychopathic individual, and this would destroy his reputation in the community and force him to be shunned and socially exiled. Mel Veronica never responded to this, privating his Twitter and deleting all traces of his YouTube channel, and since this has happened, there's really been nothing to add to the drama, besides what the community has already taken and done with the knowledge. Overall, the legacy of this is Mel Veronica becoming a hated individual in the community, and there's really not much else to talk about for the drama. So with that said, let's head on to the next one. Our next situation isn't too much of a drama, but more of a big movement from a single creator who made a level with a pretty powerful message. In the Radiator by Will S is a level that was released June 29th of 2020, and it's one of the most thematically and artistically driven levels this game has ever seen. Consisting of over 4 minutes of auto gameplay with foggy glow all over the screen, this level is meant to go against the norm for Geometry Dash levels intentionally, as to take shots at the increasing number of creators who make flashy effect levels because they do well as the norm. Wallace also wrote an extensive pacement on the level that described their intentions behind it, and encouraged others to join in on the so-called movement. This level does not gain a whole lot of traction at first, but that soon changes, when I release my video The Problems of the Creating Community, which talks about the level and builds on the themes it addresses. I'm definitely not saying this is the only thing that contributes to the growth of the level, but it definitely gives it a hearty boost, which I am very happy to say I contributed to, as I still stand by many of the things I said in that video and the movement in the Radiator boasts. The level is met with a hefty amount of controversy, with most either hating it or adoring it, saying it's either brilliant or effortless and meaningless. 
A third party does emerge from these two extremist points of view as well, believing that the level itself isn't good, but the message behind it is, which is the one that I find myself most aligned with. The level gets even bigger when Viperin, a very well-known and influential community member, makes a community post on his channel about it, elaborating on its themes and expressing how important he thinks their message is. This is the nail in the coffin that gets the level even more in the community eye, and at this point, most active community members have likely heard of it and understand it in essence. I think In the Radiator is a very important level for one reason. It was one of the first big levels that made the movement towards artistic works in GD, which is a movement that we have seen continue to be built on in the past few months. In the Radiator was a big part of this trend, and that's why I think it's so vital to mention it as not entirely a drama with people arguing, but as a big event that changed the community in a big way. Some of you might not understand why I put this in the video, but hopefully I explained myself well enough so that you all can. Today, the level is mostly signed light as other artistic works like Save As have made their name, but we cannot forget it as a catalyst for artistic works in GD. The next drama that we have to talk about is one that is similar in concept to the previous Community Unrest revolving around the 2.1 awards. This is the community's issue with the Geometry Dash Discord Creator Contest, a contest that had its results announced in July of 2020 and had been going on for a few months before its conclusion. The GDSCC was a huge creator contest that was available for all to participate who were members of the Geometry Dash Discord server, and the premise behind the contest was that you had to remake an old entry to any creator contest as a new level. This meant that any level previously entered into a creator contest could be chosen as one that was going to be remade from any update or creator. There were hundreds of results for the contest, and overall, the levels made were some of the highest quality for a creator contest ever. But, many expected the results to not exactly be accurate, as the 2.1 awards had somewhat shown that the team behind these sort of organizations aren't the most fair. And unfortunately, to many community members, this came true. From levels like Mystical Myth not making the top 10 at all, to entries like Armageddon by Manix making the cut when they weren't even a remake of a level, the issues from the creator contest were plentiful. Many spoke out about this on Twitter and complained about the unfair judgement, and this all resulted in a community-wide discussion that 99% of the time was against the decisions made for the creator contest. Personally, I agree that the results were largely accurate, and honestly, they might have even been worse than the 2019 2.1 awards. Overall, while the arguments over the contest eventually faded as it became more and more irrelevant, this is just another big example of an event that put a huge dent in the trust between the community and the higher-up organizers of these events. Today, that legacy still stands true, and I think those who run these events need to make some very satisfactory decisions for the Geometry Dash 2020 awards if they want to have any hope of regaining the community's trust. Anyway, that's somewhat irrelevant, and that's essentially where the drama ends, though I think it's interesting to consider how it has impacted us today. There's really not much else to say here, so I will just get on to the next drama. Next is another pretty petty Twitter drama, but one that we should mention nonetheless. This is the Layak difficulty drama, and while it's pretty simple, it has a sizable reach in its influence, so I thought I would talk about it. Layak is an easy extreme demon that was made by Enzor, Marwek, and Ilrel, and it's become a fan-favorite demon and entryway extreme for rising players. However, as it got popular and time went on, many began to resent the idea that Layak is an extreme, instead believing that it was a hard, insane demon. The publication of these opinions starts with Walwood, a top player and well-known presence on GD Twitter. On July 10th, 2020, he posted a tweet arguing that Layak is easier than Deadlocked, and while most don't agree with his statement, it begins the discussion for how hard Layak really is. From here, numerous parties all over Twitter push for Layak to become an insane demon instead of an extreme, and those who have Layak as the hardest are occasionally made fun of. Even though this drama happened 4 months ago, it still persists today, with Layak quite consistently being argued as an insane demon by top players while other less skilled players argue as an easy extreme. There's really no right answer, and having never played the level I have no stance on the matter, but this is still a significant drama to mention, as it has persisted all the way to today. And while it's only really relevant on Twitter, it's definitely one to talk about. There's really not much else to say for this, except for how it proves the disagreement between top players and less skilled players in the community, and outlines the divide between them. Our next drama is one that's similar to the Layak one, but this time from a creating perspective. Save As is a level that was released on July 19th, 2020, and while it garnered a huge name for itself as one of the most artistically competent and well-made works in Geometry Dash, it's also accumulated plenty of controversy. While Save As has been accepted as a brilliant work for the message behind it, many have come to resent the praise the level has received because of its lack of design and gameplay. Some smaller community members voiced it shouldn't be rated because of this reason, but the drama really kicks off when Technical49, a big community influence and top player, makes this tweet about it in July. 
In it, Technical says how he doesn't think Save As is very good level quality-wise, but its message is incredibly unique and effective, and that's why he thinks it's a good level. Many people miss the point about it being effective thematically, and from here, many begin to make mockery of the level's decoration, gameplay, and theme. On the other side of the spectrum, some completely white knight it and label it as the best level in the game, and this creates a huge divide in the Twitter community as to whether Save As is a good level or not. Very, very strong beliefs about this are developed as time passes, and they are mostly still held to this day. Not much else is significant about this drama, other than that it is an example of two extremist sides of an argument forming on Geometry Dash Twitter and duking it out. Like I said, very strong beliefs are still harbored about this demon today, and while I am personally a fan of the level, I think it's really interesting how every time a popular level comes along that does stuff differently, two extremist sides of defending and refuting the level form and go head to head. I think this drama is a perfect demonstration of that. Anyway, that's really all for the Save As drama, so let's move on to our next one. Still not past the first week of August in the Save As situation, we have our next drama. This one involves Newgrounds, and while it did not include much arguing, it was still a very significant situation that affected the Geometry Dash music landscape heavily. As I am sure many of you know, Newgrounds is the website that Geometry Dash gets its widespread music library from, and while this is a very beneficial connection for all Geometry Dash players, the relationship between the Geometry Dash community and Newgrounds community has not always been positive. This damaged relationship is only furthered when in August, Newgrounds updates its copyright policy for music allowed on their page. Now, any song that samples a copyrighted song will be deleted from the portal, and while for some artists this meant some of their individual songs got removed, for others it meant their entire discography was deleted. The deletion of entire artists' music libraries was very inconsistent, and there was a very big uproar from the GD community as a result of this. Big artists like Burger X and their song Scorpion were deleted amongst many others, and you can probably expect how this had a quite serious impact on Geometry Dash for all the famous levels that got their songs deleted. Newgrounds would refuse to go back on this choice, though, and we'd have to eventually accept the cruel reality that was presented. The situation still affects us heavily today, and is definitely one worth a mention in this video. The next drama is the sudden and unexpected downfall of a very big mega collab host and team leader, Vernam. Vernam began to make his name in 2.1 as a primary mega collab host when he spearheaded the level Shinigami, and though the original version of that is dead today, he would build off the recognition he gained from that to host very popular collabs such as Void Wave, Firework, New Shinigami, and many others. He established Cherry Team, the organization behind all these levels, and grew its brand heavily as the months passed. But suddenly, in August of 2020, this legacy would come crashing down. Rumors started to surface of Vernam being transphobic and homophobic and harassing trans or gay people in real life, and as video footage of him attacking these people verbally in public locations emerged, he was forced to respond. And instead of putting out an apology, he confirmed the allegations in a very unsettling video. This essentially destroyed his reputation as he got exposed all over Twitter, and he's been shunned from the community ever since. There's really not much else to this drama, besides it coming out of nowhere, but it's definitely something worth mentioning, as it's the downfall of a hugely popular and well-known collab host and team leader. Our next point of discussion for this video isn't exactly a drama like some other examples have been, as it's more of a movement in response to a community rocking event. This is actually two similar situations that I'm going to be lumping into one section of the video, and the first is the hashtag Free Nepesta movement. I'm sure a lot of you know what happened with this to initiate the movement, but I will still cover it for the sake of the video. On August 25th, 2020, popular Geometry Dash YouTuber Nepesta got his channel demonetized for reused content, and with this obviously being a mistake, as Nepesta makes 100% original videos, he tried to contact YouTube support via Twitter to fix the misjudgment. This would, in turn, lead to one of the biggest unifications of the Geometry Dash community in history. Building off Nepesta's attempt to get his channel remonetized, the community would start a hashtag dubbed hashtag free Nepesta that would spread like a wildfire. Amazingly enough, the community actually managed to get the hashtag trending on Twitter, and this is a really inspiring reflection of what we can do when we come together. As a result of our resilience, Nepesta's channel did get remonetized, and this again is a very heartwarming story. That wasn't the only movement involving a popular Geometry Dash YouTube channel that would occur in that week, though. A mere two days later, community legend Riot, inspired by Nepesta's success, attempted to start a second wave of the hashtag Free Riot movement to get his channel back that he had lost some two years ago. Riot had a channel with over 200,000 subscribers that had been lost due to a false permaban, as you know from earlier in the video, and on August 27th, he actually managed to get his channel reinstated. This was a huge deal, as over that two-year period, Riot had tried multiple times to get his channel situation resolved, but never to any avail. 
Both of these situations really show what we can do when we come together as a community, and they're very inspiring back-to-back -back stories that show a really nice aspect of the GD community. Hashtag Free Napesta and Hashtag Free Riot are definitely movements to remember, and they're great examples of what the community can do when we put our minds to it. The next drama we have to discuss is another pretty serious one, as well as being quite the large misunderstanding. This is in late August to early September of 2020, and it involves Xylanox and pedophile accusations aimed at him from one of his fans that he engaged in online sexual activity with. This person is known as Philv, and he was a big fan of Xylanox's, as he was very active on his Discord server and owned a subreddit themed around him. At the time of the sexual interactions, Xylanox was 18, and Philv tells him he is 17, making their relationship legal. However, in August of 2020, Zai would find out Phil's real age, 13, and retreat to an alternate Discord account to protect himself. Colorbolt would post an infamous thread publicizing the pedophilia accusations against Zai in the next few days, which would be the thing that would get the discussion and the situation in the community eye. The fact that Xylanox retreated to an alternate account really didn't help his case at all, but he would eventually come out clarifying that though he didn't know Phil's age at the time, he was sorry for his reckless behavior and it wouldn't happen again. Phil talked to V Addiction that same day, and Addiction attempts to dock Xylanox, but fails. However, Active picks up the torch and docks Xy, resulting in him calling the police. The drama would die down from here, with people mostly staying divided to this day as whether to forgive Xy or not. But most have moved past what he did, even though a portion of the community still does not understand that he is not a pedophile and that it was a misunderstanding. This is a pretty big deal at the time, as another huge YouTuber like Xylanox turning out to be a pedo would have been a big hit to the community, and not many wanted to face that drama again. Anyway, the Xylanox drama has mostly moved on from now, uploading content on this channel and continuing his career as usual. Definitely a scary drama for many people, but it had a decently satisfactory ending compared to many others. The next drama is another one that involves Viperin, the mod team, Robtop, and hard feelings towards the observed bias between these parties from the wider community. This is the Geometry Dash username drama and we can trace its origins back to the inability to change your Geometry Dash account name to the same name as someone else who already has it, even if it's in an active account. This means that if, for example, someone who had the Geometry Dash name Norkbork before me prior to when I shortened my name from Norkbork21 to Norkbork, I would not be able to get my name shortened. This stands true even if the other Norkbork in question is an active account. This being said, Robtop can change names manually like that, though this supposedly takes a quite a bit of effort. So, what's the problem here? Well, the drama starts in early September of 2020, when some influential members of the community, with some players like Technical and Lake being examples, use their connections to get Robtop to free up their name for them that someone else already has so they can change or shorten their name on Geometry Dash. There's really nothing wrong with this, but this sparks begin to fly when lesser known community members catch wind of this. They also want to have their names free up on the servers, but Robtop understandingly cannot favor everyone. This leads to bitter feelings toward the privilege and bias the more well-known community members enjoy. A lot of people express that if Robtop couldn't do it for everyone, he shouldn't have done it for anyone, which is a notion that I personally agree with. Viper makes a Twitter thread about the situation that had been arising on the 10th of September, which clears up a lot of things. And while he uses the explanation that mods need to be easily reachable, it still doesn't explain why someone like Technical got his name changed. At the end of the day, it does all just come down to him being more well known. And while it's nice that we can have our names changed, it's understandable how it can be annoying for smaller community members who want to share that right. This drama doesn't last for very long beyond Viperin's Twitter thread, but it's still another example of a situation that damages the bond between the top hierarchy of players and the bottom class of community members. Next up is a pretty serious situation that regarded a very popular Geometry Dash YouTuber and their channel of over 400,000 subscribers. Dorami is a very well-known presence in the GD YouTube scene, and he's one of the biggest active GD channels for sure. He's definitely a fan favorite, and the growth he's achieved in 2.1 alone is absolutely mind-boggling. However, the future of his channel suddenly seemed grim one September night. On September 20th, 2020, Dorami's YouTube channel got hacked and was replaced by someone named Justin Sun, who used Dorami's 400,000 subscriber audience to stream into advertisements for his scam company, Tron. This confused many of his fans, and it undoubtedly cost him a large amount of subscribers. All his old videos were privatized, and all that remained of this once-hit channel was Justin Sun in his stream. I'm sure you all can understand how Dorami likely bases his life off his income of YouTube, so the shock it must have been to lose it so suddenly was likely something we cannot comprehend by simply hearing about it. Dorami would then go to Twitter to try and spread word about his situation to the community and maybe catch the ears of YouTube support, which could maybe bring back his channel. It's unknown how he actually lost his channel to the hacker, 
but over the next few days he would continue to try and contact YouTube, and eventually he would manage to get his channel back. It was never publicized how he managed to do this, but he luckily managed to get out of the way of this very scary situation. The loss of a channel such as Jeremy would not only be very sad, but it would also be likely detrimental to the activity of many members of the Geometry Dash YouTube community. After getting his channel back, Jeremy continued to upload his normal where he is today, and it's definitely fortunate that he managed to get out of this sticky situation before it got any worse. This is a pretty confusing occurrence for most when the hacker's stream showed up on their sub boxes, and overall, it's a good lesson for the community to be more careful about these kinds of things. Anyway, that's all for that drama, so let's get on to the next one. Another drama revolving around a good friend at PESTA is next up on our list. This one takes place in late September and early October of 2020, and as we are starting to near present day, many of you might remember these dramas. Anyway, this is the Lime the Pesta situation. Lime is a somewhat well-known creator and community member, and he's participating in collabs like Wasu Reda, alongside hosting A Nemesis and being the creator of Phosphorescent. Alongside being involved in levels such as those just listed, his other claim to fame is his extreme decorated challenge Vein. About a month ago, when Apesta was streaming footage for his video where he beat top 50 challenges, he decided near the end of the stream that he would try to beat Vayne as one to include. Napesta and Lime apparently do not have the greatest history between each other, and when Lime saw Napesta was trying to beat his level for the video, he super buffed it before his next stream so he wouldn't be able to beat it. This was a pretty backhanded move, and Napesta ended up beating the super buffed version anyway, but that's not where the drama ends. If Napesta had simply ignored the jab at him by Lime, there would have been no issue but Nepesta talked about the situation on stream and ended up including it in the video. Now, Nepesta was respectful when addressing Lime, but that didn't mean his fans saw the drama through the same lens. After Nepesta published the video, Lime would get hate from all over the community, getting sent death threats and other needlessly harsh messages. Nepesta and Lime had supposedly already worked out the issue, so this was uncalled for on the behalf of Nepesta's fans. Even if it hadn't been, it was never acceptable for his followers to take it that far. As much as Lime got hate for the drama, Nepesta would get a fair amount of criticism too, for his lack of foresight regarding the events that transpired and his unwillingness to admit he was partly to blame. This drama would phase out as time went on, but it just left a bad taste in the mouth of all parties involved, and it's definitely a big factor that contributed to Nepesta beginning to get questioned when it comes to his responsibility over these situations. Our next situation is somewhat of an explicit one, so I won't be going super into detail about all the nitpicks of it, but it's definitely something I have to mention. It's also one of the stupidest dramas that's ever happened in this game. This is another Twitter drama, and it's one of the biggest that has ever happened in the past year. This is the anime Twitter vs GD Twitter drama that went down in October of 2020. This whole situation starts with a few tweets from Yvonne, who comments on a post that expresses attraction to Megumin, an underage anime character. A very explicit response from another member of the anime Twitter community follows, and the thread is posted on a popular Twitter account for many people in the Geometry Dash community to see. From here, the GD community would start to target the accounts that were involved in the drama, often quoting their tweets and calling them out for being pedophiles. The anime Twitter community responded by calling the GD Twitter community pedophiles, and the drama gets a lot more headache inducing from here. The two communities continue to take shots at each other for a while after this, but things start to get bad from here on. The GD community takes all the jokes that anime Twitter makes way too seriously, and from jokes about mass reporting to other things, the Geometry Dash community makes a pretty big fool of themselves in the following days. Despite this, some members of the anime Twitter community actually report Geometry Dash community member accounts, such as Thermoxen, who got his account locked, and Sirtrax, who got his account suspended. Things do peak at those two occurrences, though, and the drama settles down from here. I don't really want to talk about this for much longer, as I find it incredibly stupid and uninteresting, so with there being no more key events, I'm just going to get on to the next drama. The next drama is another pretty heavy one, similar to the male Veronica situation, so I recommend treading lightly here if you decided to skip over that one as well. This is the Crazen situation, which occurred in October of 2020, and I'm fairly certain that most of you should already understand somewhat what transpired in this, or at least the repercussions. Crazen was a top player that had been steamrolling extreme demons in the top 50 prior to this drama, and with his victory over levels like the Golden, it seemed he was only ripping up in skill. Unfortunately, this all came crashing down on October 16th, 2020. On this day, Alin, an underage community member, would come forth with information about Crazing DMing them with the attentions to ERP in August. Alin was 13 at the time, and Crazing was 17, just for reference. Crazing ends up calling with Alin and doing explicit things on camera with them, despite them expressing that it made them uncomfortable. A while later, Alin would accidentally out the fact that they did these things together, and the person that heard about it got very mad at Crazen for grooming them, 
which prompted Crazen and Alin to make up a lie that none of it ever happened. Alin would stick with this lie until mid-October, when they would come to realize that there was something terribly wrong with their relationship. And with prompt from a few friends, she would come out and write an infamous twit longer about what happened. There were also many stories coming out about Crazen being accused of sexually harassing others, and to drive this point home, Crazen also tried to manipulate Alin into thinking they were semi-responsible for what happened. With the amount of people coming out with the stories similar to Alin's, Crazen's reputation went down and down, to the point where he would delete his Twitter and make a twit longer post that explained he would be leaving the community for good. And from here, he deleted his channel and disappeared all but entirely from the community. As a result of this drama, Crazen is now a shunned figure in the community, and while some say his actions might have been something he's moved on from today, recent events have confirmed he hasn't changed at all. Today, Crazen has been completely disgraced in the GD community, and for good reason. Unless he changes completely, it's probably best that he never returns. There's not anything else crucial to mention about this drama, and I'm sure you all already know most of the stuff about it, as it was a very recent event. With this in mind, let's just move on to our second to last drama for today. The semi-final drama we have to discuss today is the mass level leaking that occurred in October of 2020. This situation revolves around Viper Arcturus and Needles, two prominent figures in the inner workings of the community. On the 19th of October, they both decide to accumulate a list of unreleased and or unfinished levels that they personally have copies of, and they end up with a library of numerous unreleased levels that Viper Arcturus gets copies of and uploads a listed to his account. So, now there was a collection of countless unreleased levels on his account, and via a screenshot of all the IDs, a player named Vapor manages to leak all of the levels. Again, there is an extensive amount of unreleased projects here, such as Deimos, Keres, Hopeless, God of Despair, a Sukup and Circles remake, Knight Rider, Galaxy Collapse, Sonic Wave Infinity, Anathema, Master Spark, The Apocalypse Trilogy, Slaughterhouse, Promethean, Sinister Incision, Aerial Gleam, and countless others. Those are just some of the more significant ones, so you can see how this is a pretty big deal. Blame was placed on Viper and Needles for this, but Vapor was the one who leaked the levels to the public, so he should have had the most blame placed on him. Overall, many individuals managed to get copies of all these levels, and you should be able to tell how this is a quite significant drama. Not one that too many people know about, but still one that is definitely worth a mention. Anyway, there's really nothing else to talk about here, so let's get into our last drama for this video. The final drama we have to talk about today is obviously a very recent event, having only occurred in the past week or so. The drama in question is the Breeze and Red Hue C video striking situation. This drama actually dates back to around 7 months ago, when Breeze and Bo were initially going head to head in the community in the Bo Breeze striking situation, if you remember that from earlier in the video. Of course, while this was happening, it was quite a relevant drama in the community, and YouTuber Red Husey ended up addressing the situation on his show Hughes News. He also made a follow up to the drama in his Hughes News video that followed that one, but this was all 7 months ago, so why is it relevant now? Well, on November 5th, Husey would upload a video of him beating 9 circles by Zobros, his first hard demon. In this 10 minute video, he would include a 1 second clip that belonged to Breeze, and for reasoning that likely stemmed back to the hard feelings from the Hughes News video, Breeze striked the video and got it taken down. Husey understandably got very upset at this, and he not only contacted YouTube but assembled a team of lawyers as well to attempt to get his video reinstated. He expected to eventually get his video back up, as the clip he had used was classified under fair use, but Husey would end up contacting Breeze and attempting him to take the strike down manually before that, as it would take less time. He actually managed to talk to Breeze and get him to take the strike down, and he addressed this all in a video he recently uploaded on his channel that talked about the whole situation and Breeze's side of the story. I have no opinions myself on this drama, I'm just reporting what I've heard, but it's still one worth mentioning, as you can probably tell how throughout 2020, Breeze has been a key name when it comes to numerous dramas. But yeah, that's the most recent drama when this video has been released, so that's the final one we had to talk about today. With that said, let's roll the outro. Hey guys, thank you so much if you did watch this far, it really means a lot to me, as I put a ton of effort into this video. I'm sure it won't take long for this to become outdated, with there seeming to be drama every couple of weeks in the community nowadays, but it's unavoidable. Drama is always a huge component of the community and what keeps players engaged in the game, and I always found it interesting how there is so much more disagreement in such a simple cube platformer game than most other communities out there. The Geometry Dash community really is such an interesting and unique spectacle, and learning about its intricacies is always a fun experience, so I definitely enjoyed making my way through the past and pulling out these threads of significant interaction. My main hope for this video is that it can preserve another aspect of 2.1's legacy and nostalgia, 
And then, similar to how we can look back at C1997's video on the first half of 2.1 drama, we can look back upon this and remember the days that these dramas occurred, as well as marvel at how much the community has changed since then. Anyway, I'll stop rambling now. If you did watch this far, again, I seriously thank you, and I really hope you enjoyed this time capsule of a video. If you liked it and have not subscribed yet, you could always consider subscribing, as we are getting pretty close to 10,000 subscribers, but there's no pressure. I do want to quickly thank all the people who helped me put this video together, from my close friends who helped me research some of the dramas, to the wider Twitter community who helped me remember a lot of them. On that note, I do want to thank you all for the incredible support as of late. It's really been such an awesome experience that keeps me motivated to keep making better and better stuff for you guys. Anyway, thank you guys so much for again for watching, and I hope you have a great day. See you all in the next one.